And welcome back to another episode of Star of the Commander. I'm Prize Plus I'm Fleet Admiral Tyrk, the Battle Cruiser GCS Protector. As we continue our campaign against the Klingon Star Empire, last time we, well, pretty much cleared up the entire northern edge. The enemy had uh, managed to get a couple of footholds up here, which we came in and swooped through, also tore off all of their attempts to move through the west. So we have the enemy fairly contained. The Klingons are being pushed further and further south, and we will smash them up against the edge of the map. So, with that out of the way, let's go check out the supply yard. We have a little bit of repairs that we need to get done we were out there for eh, not too long but some time and now that we're all patched up let us set out into space and see if we can't start shoving the klingons back let's get ambushed that's always fun we'll see what sort of forces the klingons can bring to try and destroy our little tiny well battle cruiser that is far more powerful than anything else they have in their fleet anyway today we are squaring off against according to the fleet screen a heavy cruiser, it is a D7D, the Blue Fire, also known affectionately as the Azula, as well as an FSPL, which is a freighter, so we can basically ignore him. Alright, let's just uh, prepare the forward shield reinforcement and probably start a tractor beam in the relatively near future. How much part do I currently have available? I have nothing, so we'll do that to get me 1.1, and we'll kick on the tractor beam. Oop, we untargeted him, which hopefully will- okay, did not mess with my tractor beam systems. Lovely. So we're just going to maximize the speed of time and cruise in on him. We will destroy the blue fire in literally one salvo. That's not really a concern. I probably won't even have to use my phasers for this one. He's only a D7D at the end of the day. So once the plasma torpedoes are ready to rock and roll, which uh, very shortly they will be, we'll grab onto him, we'll annihilate him, it'll be great. And he's open fire with his missiles, but that ain't going to save him because we have a D-type plasma torpedo. Oh, it looks like he fired a scatter pack. And that was not very helpful at all. We didn't even need to do the tractor beam at that point. With a scatter pack on the field, he doesn't have any ability to launch wild weasel shuttles. Uh, set our phasers to overload. We're going to start coming into the VSPL. He's got, what, two phasers, I believe? A phaser two and a phaser three? Might be a Oh, no, he's got a G-type plasma torpedo. Holy crap. Turn away. Let's give him some distance. So, we don't really need to give him distance. He only can put out 20 points of damage with that G-type plasma torpedo. Not a probe. Is he actually charging it? He's not. Okay, never mind. Uh, ooh, tractor beam. Yeah, that'll be important. We will go once more around the horn. He's not actually charging the tractor beam, which, or the plasma torpedo, which is hilarious to me. So, in that case, we can just run up to him, bounce him, and annihilate him. So, after far more life than he otherwise deserved. There. So, a nice little ambush that we fought our way out of. By the way, if you happen to get yourself in one of the ambush campaigns, if you play this game as well, do not capture ships in this mission, because it will then give you a negative 550 score. So, the price that you make for destroying everything and getting away 550, it'll penalize you for if you capture a vessel. Don't ask me why it happens, it's consistent and happens all the time, so just don't bother capturing anything in that campaign. Another ambush, so apparently we're just going around going la di da and letting them just come at us. I think actually it's a fairly brilliant strategy, depending on what they actually send at us. Oh, that's a little bit bigger. Okay, overload the, for the plasma torpedoes, and let's get uh, a checking going on. We do have a light cruiser. This screen identifies as an HF-53X, so an alphabet super war destroyer, and a C-8 Dreadnought. Now, he's actually going to take a little bit more fire for us to actually destroy. Uh, I think it actually requires us to go through him and utilize all of our phases in order to actually cause enough damage to annihilate him. But we should be able to have that done in relatively short order, so we're just going to increase the speed of time. Double check our tractor beam, make sure that it's charging, because it's the most important thing. It's actually not the plasma torpedoes are, but the tractor beam being active is very, very important to make sure that you actually actually are able to destroy the enemy because if you just fire the plasma torpedoes he will dump a wild weasel and that wild weasel will prevent you from being able to do anything now i do believe wild weasels also prevent tractor locks so honestly one of the things that they could do if they were smart and they do not have the intelligence to do this but if they were smart is they could dump a wild weasel beyond the range of my tractor beam my tractor beam only has a range of about 2.5 which updates depending on game speed and so as you can see it's a 2.4 at the moment and we'll shoot him, and then we'll go through. So if they dropped the tractor beam while traveling at the speed of four, by the way, you gotta go super slow to make the tractor beam work. Ooh, forward shield almost down. Good job there. Will you be able to survive the incoming? And, oh no, I already fired everything. Huh, you're alive, which is impressive. I can't capture you. It'd be nice. I mean, you'd think that that would be a great thing to try and pull off. But no, the uh, high command does not necessarily appreciate it. When you steal the ships, that they clearly are working with the Klingons to try and get you killed. 
Now on the bright side, he's got a speed of 1.3, which tells us that his power consumption is totally screwed with, and those fighters are way, way off in the distance. I might even want to be able to engage you, but I think I'm just going to see if I can play a little bit more of a defensive game with my forward shield, because I don't want to lose it. It would be embarrassing, after all, to go through one of these missions and suddenly find yourself damaged. So we can take the damage across multiple sides. Oh, pardon me. It has been a day. So we're going to just line up on as a challenger, and he's going really, really slow, actually. It's just somewhat irritating me, because I would like to him just pass by at a maximum speed, so I don't have to worry about him. But he is very much avoiding that, and so I'm just going to keep turning in the other direction. I don't want to shoot at you, I want to shoot at you. Although, this is actually becoming a pretty significant problem. Uh, the amount of damage he's dealing to me is becoming concerning. Wow, he's actually through my shield, jeez. Okay, so our attempts at protecting our forward shield have not backfired, just it's becoming somewhat complicated. Hi, you have little mini fighters coming in. I have enough phases to go. There we go. Okay, so this fighter squadron doesn't exist anymore. Your shuttle bay is destroyed, so we're just going to lob a whole bunch of plasma torpedoes at you. That'll kill you. So he's dead, and now we have our starboard side shields facing towards the enemy. Do we actually have any damage? We don't. The armor took it. We still have to repair the armor by going home, but the armor did take it, and we have destroyed the C-8 Dreadnought. So now what we can do is we can sort of scuttle along and wait for our plasma torpedoes to recharge, pick him up, and then annihilate him with heavy weapons. That'll be probably the way we end up doing this. Could turn towards him to use my forward shield reinforcement. After all, we have quite a few points of power into it. 17 is not bad at all. Although if he turns... Oh, that's a really good point. We went through his forward shield, so he's going to be extra gun-shy about showing it to me. That's lovely. Uh, our type plasma torpedoes are almost ready. I'm going to start charging. That way, by the time I actually get to within range, I will be able to dump an arm, perhaps even two, onto him. I'm trying to manage my speed very carefully so that we can get into him at the right speed so that we don't get too close before our plasma torpedoes are ready and our plat forward ones are ready to rock. Shield reinforcement is actually able to take all these hits, so he's not actually accomplishing anything. It looks like he's going to swing in nice and close. Oh, you're going to come within range. Hi. It's only two R-type plasma torpedoes. It's not the full barrage, but I think we've made him hurt. Let's let him go. You are free, sir. And, uh, well, yeah. So, we managed to take care of that. The, that heavy war destroyer actually managed to do a lot more damage to me than I otherwise would have preferred. Taking that much damage is not great, obviously. Another 550 prestige, so that puts us up to 24,656 24, prestige. Oh, these plasma race campaigns generally tend to just give you stupid amounts of prestige after a while. So I think we'll try and grab this little group, although we could try and keep pushing them away for our borders. Shipyard Assault. Not the most entertaining of missions, but it is a mission that does need to get done. And the reason why it's not entertaining is because you've got to go between three different star bases, or three different, not star bases, what were they? Fleet Repair Docks. And that can be just a little bit tedious uh, for many reasons. Let's overload the plasma torpedoes. We are being escorted today by... The USS Paris, a guided dreadnought equipped with a whole bunch of heavy weapons, and then we're scoring off against a C-7 battle cruiser and a heavy war destroyer. So an Alpha Soup heavy war destroyer should be fairly easy to take out. So this entire setup right here is kind of a joke because he can take out the heavy war destroyer in no time at all, and we can annihilate the battle cruiser in literally one salvo. So yeah, bit of a waste here, but hey. So now that our phasing capacitor is fully charged, we can steal most of that power for speed so that we can just get on top of them as fast as we can. We don't, actually don't want to go too fast on top of them because otherwise our plasma torpedoes won't be fully charged. They take three full turns to charge, which can take a long, long time. I need to wait just a little bit longer, and we did have to angle out a little bit more than I otherwise preferred. Ooh, the plasma torpedoes are going to be not ready in time. So we're going to have to sort of hope he's seeing if he can't pull away. And we got to wait, because our plasma torpedoes aren't ready. There they go. Okay, that, that'll be done in time. Okay, so that was rather close, actually. We ended up going too fast for what we were actually capable of handling. Uh, and, of course, the tractor beam is now dented. We'll do that to shut that up. So the Paris should hopefully get in sometime soon so he can actually take on these incoming fighters. Or at least that would be the hope. And also there's, or not the fighters, but the, the alphabet suit war destroyer. I don't really care about the fighters, if I'm completely honest. Oh, we launched a scatter pack. That's not the worst strategy he's ever had for many reasons. Gatling phaser, blinking away. Uh, and the reason why 
is because we actually don't have any plasma torpedoes right now. And he knows we don't have any plasma torpedoes right now because we annihilated his friend. But defense, uh, doing an okay job, but there's... We don't have so many phasers that we can just handle any sort of rush. Thankfully, the Paris comes in, helping out quite a bit. Wow, we have been dented by this heavy order strike quite a bit as well. Uh, phasers, engage. Let's just start opening them up a little bit. So we are going quite slow. Alright, please stop doing that. That's that's not okay. I'm going to see seeing if I can't shoot weapons through his defenses. Okay, aft shield's having a bit of a struggle, but I think we should be okay. I'm just going to increase the speed of time at this point, because the phasers should be able to handle everything else. Actually, to be honest, the Paris should be handling everything else, but the Paris, instead of going in like a madman like he should be doing, uh, has decided to run. So, good fire plasma torpedoes from this range wouldn't be the most brilliant plan I ever had. Oh, no, it would be. There we go. Alright, so on to the Stardox. And the Stardox appear to be, according to the fleet screen anyway. Actually, you no, know, we don't know. Uh, go look at the Paris. They are IFRDs. Really? ISC? That's interesting. So they're ISC fleet repair docks. Which I believe are equipped with plasma torpedoes. Let's go send a probe to find out. I think you have, yeah, you've got an F-type plasma torpedo and your host of phasers. So we can basically just tank it. So we're just going to pull up into a nice little parking orbit next to him. We'll fire one of our plasma torpedoes, wait for him to deploy the wild weasel. Then we'll fire all of our other plasma torpedoes. It'll blow him up. And in essence, we've got about 14 turns left to sort of go in amongst all of these locations. So get ready on the S so that we can actually make sure that he dies. If he dies, he dies. We'll just get him. That's our range. Bounce. Hey, look at that. You are about to have no more defense. And there it goes. You're dead. And that's how we do that. So now we just need to get to the next one. And then spend three turns charging our weapons for that. Then get to the third one, spend three turns charging for that and destroying them. It's literally impossible for them to win at this point. I, I struggle to think of a ship that would not be able to take on a fleet repair dock. Like, I don't think it's all that difficult to pull off. Yeah, we had more than 20 points of power in the forward shield. He literally could not stop us. And so... The bait. Three, two, one. And the switch. On to the last one. Is the Paris actually going to get involved? Or No, he's, he's literally facing the exact wrong direction. Oh, now he's starting to move because he's been shot at, I think. It's not really clear. Uh, I think I'm going to get to it before he will. I mean, he is cruising along at a speed of 8, so it's not exactly like he's in much of a hurry at the moment. Meanwhile, we are also not exactly cruising all that quickly. We could, but I just wanted to make sure my plasma torpedoes had enough time to charge a problem which has been resolved, and that plasma torpedo literally had zero chance of ever reaching us. I'm not quite sure what the plan was. So wait. Fire. And slow down the ship, because we don't want to get too close. You know what? Just hit that crash stop button. Evade. No, stop evading. Just stop. Wait for the attack shift to go We And if it's not gone by now, then it doesn't exist. Yeah. Taken care of. Without any trouble. So the heavy bombardment cruiser for the Gorn is very well suited to be able to, being able to take out these kind of siege operations. Although it's just a little bit irritating to have to go between all three. So, 450 prestige is our reward for a job well done. We'll pop over here to a star base. It is an ABT 10 patrol. Lovely. So, we don't, hopefully, will not have to lose this star base. I'd rather capture it. Capturing star bases gives you more economic power, pushes back harder on the enemy. Overload the systems. We're dealing with a heavy cruiser and a heavy cruiser. So, according to this, we're dealing with a DWD, which is a drone cruiser. It's basically a D5, except it's got an extra NSL. And an HR, a heavy raider. So, I'm going to ignore him and I'm going to go for the drone cruiser. Uh, that HR could be equipped with a plasma torpedo, and if that's the case, I want to be a little bit prepared for it. But it's not the primary concern, if I'm being completely honest. Also, charge the tractor beam, and we'll just maximize speed of time. Oh, yes, of course, we need the forward shield reinforcement. We also have an F6E, interesting. So the Klingons have brought a frigate. I believe it's one of their advanced frigates, because the F6 is, uh, maybe not. I'm not quite familiar with that, actually. I don't see it all that often, but then again, we generally don't have to bother with trying to fight uh, frigates in general. Do I know what weapons you've got yet? Oh, you, you are packing plasma. Okay. That's that's interesting. So, we're just going to rush in on top of you. I think he fired his plasma torpedo at me. Not really clear. Yeah, he did. Boop. 
able to avoid most of that. And it is two Gs, and that's it. Okay. Do I go after you? I mean, I don't know if you're a drone frigate or not. Actually, I think what I want to do is we're going to take a message from the Romulan playbook. We're just going to blitz on through this because he doesn't have any real long range. I was about to say he doesn't have any real long range weapons and then they brought my shields down to red. But what I want to do is I want to run until my plasma torpedoes are fully set, turn back in and blast this guy. Well, we can figure out what he's packing. So this is the fastest speed we can go while charging and I'm gonna drop him there. Yes, I know I'm using consumable. What craziness is this? And slow the ship way down and by way down I mean pretty much completely. Oh, he's turned away. Why would you do that? Well, I know exactly why you would do that. You send this guy in first to soften me up. Uh, but I don't think that's actually gonna help all that much. Let's get the plasma tor or the plasma anchor getting ready to go. So tractor beams are on the charge. I have a fairly decent shield budget. Hi, buddy. I don't want you involved in this for now, so please go away. Thank you. We'll deal with him later. No, the most important thing at the moment is handling this guy, because this guy has plasma torpedoes, and that, that's going to make my life just a little bit more difficult than it otherwise needs to be. And drones, I can handle drones. So, hi. Uh, just get within my range before this guy starts accelerating. That would be ideal. You're dead. Didn't even have his plasma torpedoes ready to go. What a fool. So we're just going to wait for him to get a speed up. He's actually pretty well endowed with heavy weapons. I figured you were ready for that. So he has fired all of his missiles and was not able to connect with anything. And it is kind of irritating that he's on this side. Plasma torpedoes in normal mode. Give me some additional power. Uh, because this is a weak side first. But I can't get him with Gatling phasers. Although, more phasers. I'd like a higher return. Just for defensive purposes. We don't normally do defensive high energy turns. Oh, I may not need it. I didn't need it. Okay, now we're into him. So now he's starting to take a little bit of damage as we come around. We're just going to keep... Whew, that was close. Uh, okay. Thanks, I guess. Um, he did clear off the mines from us, and he also sort of messed up his drop because it hit over on the right side instead of the stern. So he didn't deal quite as much damage as I think he otherwise wanted to. Shut off the tractor beam. We're just going to keep up this steady phaser fire. As long as he stays in front of me, I'm perfectly happy. Or he could do that. Sure, why not? Um, okay. Keep the phasers uh, firing. We're about to have plasma torpedoes too. So he may not want to do this. So, tractor beam system, point defense system, all of it working in concert. Keep firing the phasers, just as you bear. We've already stripped away most of his shields at this point, so now we can really start getting the damage in as the Gatling phasers get to get involved at point blank range. The atrocity. I wouldn't be proud to name my ship that. Just saying. Uh, fire one. He'll react to it. He has to, if he's got a shuttle. Looks like he didn't have a shuttle. So I think he's dead now. There we go. So we did actually manage to do that fight without actually losing a shield. And that's kind of impressive, actually. Because I was expecting to lose at least something. But no, I think the decision to just burn on through was the right one. Even though it did weaken our aft shield quite a bit. But once we were halfway through, then we were able to come around and just for free blast someone else. So 402 prestige, and the Empire is down to an Empire defense of 5. We'll pop up over here, see what we can get. An Enigma mission, the best kind of mission, mainly because it keeps the enemy from shooting you the first time around, which is great. Alright, so, red alert, overload, get up to speed of 5. It's the fastest we can do while overloading and charging, so increase the speed of time. Go check out this cruiser. Tractor beam tails, oh, I can't go fast yet. I don't have the power. Yeah, I can go. Okay, lovely. Oh, it's a freighter. Never mind. I was concerned about getting to this guy in time, but no longer. Because, uh, yeah, he's totally, totally worth us. And there are dead lithium crystals for us to see. Lovely. So this will be, like, 90 prestige. It's not a huge amount when you're sitting on top of 26,000. But every little bit is helpful. So we got that. Target you. Get the tractor beam charging. Prepare the plasma torpedoes. And... Bump. Target. Uh, oh, the powers that be already took it out. Lovely. So, mission complete. We basically showed up and annihilated that in 48 seconds. 
which, you know, that's always a pretty good feeling when you know that you can just so easily wipe a mission. It's why the Enigma is the easiest mission in the game. 106 plus 90 for a total of 196. Not bad at all. And uh, more damage to the tile. This is also down to 5. So we've got two tiles down to an Empire Defense of 5. This is down to 65. This will be a little bit of a pain to take on. And this should be relatively easy if I just pop over here. I should be able to grab that without too much trouble. So shoving the Klingons back quite efficiently. Oh, they just look so much less intimidating anymore. I wonder if they still have any, uh, maybe one here and one here. Probably two, maybe f four or five more stations? I'm not really sure with the Klingons. I think they do tend to station up a little bit harder, but probably at least four, if not five. And maybe one more planet over here. Not sure. But we will have the Klingons done shortly. Anyway, I have been Tarek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to receive a notification every time I post one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next episode.